Here at Why Upgrade, we do not only promote keeping old consoles, but we also promote keeping old technology in general, such as laptops and computers. So I'm going to throw a hypothetical situation at you. Uh, say you've just gone out and you bought yourself a new edition of Doom 2. Uh, you open the case up, somehow, without breaking it, and uh, you pull out your bag of floppy disks, and you try and insert it to one of your favourite consoles. Here we go. Oh look, it's not compatible. So what do you do? You check the front of your computer because you say it's marked PC. Uh, does it have a floppy drive? Probably not. So what are you going to do? Um, you remember back in the day you did have a floppy drive in your computer but no one ever keeps them. What can you do to rectify this? Well there's a whole bunch of laptops out there with floppy drives but uh, this is the one I'd recommend for gaming. This is the Th uh, ThinkPad 370C. Very good model of laptop. 486 processor with 14 megabytes of RAM. Uh, it runs Windows 95 very well as we can see here if I go to the start menu. Instant programs. Instant. Uh, would you get that with a Vista machine? I don't think so. Uh, this won't only just run Windows 95, but you can also exit to DOS mode and run any other operating system of your choice, such as uh, the Linux kernel or uh, Windows 3.1. So let's have a look here. Change the directory. Find out what's in it. Aha. So here we can see I have the directories Win1 and Win. 23. Win 1 being Windows 1 and Windows 23 being Windows 2.3. I also have Windows 3.1 on here. Let's see if we can boot that up. Here we go, just booting up Windows 3.1. It runs very smoothly and uh, this will be enough to play any of your uh, you know, classic games like Doom 2 and Doom. Uh, lovely colour palette. This machine has a 24-bit uh, graphics card that supports up to 24-bit color. It's a very good machine. Uh, lovely mono speaker here, supports MIDI uh, files, so you can play all your games with your favorite MIDI settings. It's a good little machine. So I think it's time we gave it a once over with our eyes and testicles. So let's start off with the top of, you, of the unit. It's quite plain, it's black, but um, it's got a nice fake leathery feel, so it's very businessy, very professional if you wanted to impress anyone. Uh, lovely IBM ThinkPad uh, Logo there, uh, caked with dust, because it never gets used. Uh, I think that adds to the appeal. So that's it for the top of it, but uh, that's what people are going to see when you're on this thing. They're going to see someone who's, uh, you know, they don't need an interesting lid. They're interesting enough without it. Uh, on the front of the unit, we have a floppy drive, and, well, that's, that's pretty much it. You won't find a CD drive for this unit, but why would you need a CD drive? That's what I'd like to know. On the bottom, you have this nice sort of gridded effect, so it won't slide along the uh, the old table, and some feet, so that you can stand it up on your desk. Very useful, and some unimportant information that we don't need to know. There's also a button here to lock the battery, which unfortunately no longer works. But hey, it's good enough for me. Uh, on the back, we have a big ass docking station uh, port. I don't know what they're called. And if you lift this flap up, you get more. So here we have a VGA out port, so you can plug in an external monitor, a parallel port for your printer, and a serial port for your mouse, or any other peripheral. There's also the power adapter, which is, uh, I think, generic to ThinkPads. I, know I have another unit similar to this, which is a Pentium 1, and it uses the same power adapter. Uh, on the sides, <coughs> we have the uh, the screen unlock mechanism so you can flip it up and power on and off and on the other side 16 bit uh, PCM CIA slots for your uh, Ethernet card if you have one like this oh yeah you can get on the network with Windows 3.11 good times and a PS2 port which is quite impressive for a laptop this age okay so let's open her up and see what's on the inside stop my headset from falling off my head wonderful Okay, so the screen is nice and big. I think it's about 14 inches. Uh, it comes with a contrast dial. You won't get uh, an automatic switcher like in Windows 7 where you unplug your battery and it goes dimmer. But hey, who needs one of those when you have a dial? Uh, the keypad is nice and crisp. Makes a lovely clicking noise, which you can't hear over my pathetic microphone. And a nipple mouse. It's probably as close to a woman as you'll ever get. And uh, mouse buttons, obviously. 
You can release the keyboard to see the innards. I wonder if I can do it. Probably not, because it's so stiff now. Uh, probably not. But you can uh, lift that up. You can see the innards, like the, the RAM and everything else. Uh, very solid. It's been thrown around a lot. This was found in a cupboard in the middle of nowhere. Still works. The internal battery is dead, but you can replace those. Uh, you know, a few pence. Uh, it's a very nice unit. You should probably pick one up. If you can't pick this one up, try and pick up a similar unit. Uh, 486s are usually very good laptops. If you go much below that, you probably get... Well, you won't get a colour screen. You get the old red L uh, LCD kind of affairs, which look terrible on monochrome. Uh, it doesn't look so great. And if you go a step up, you get Pentium 1, and people usually push those too far. With Windows 2000, they just run really sluggishly. So if you can pick one of these up for your retro games, you really should. Don't throw these away either. They can be considered as collector's item, depending on the the quality and uh, how well you keep it. So good luck finding one of these babies. I hope you do.